Hi YouTube, it's Kathy, and this is my weekly entertainment wrap-up for July 1st to 7th. This week I read four books, I watched two shows, and I listened to one book. First this week I finished A School for Unusual Girls by Kathleen Baldwin. I picked this one up because I saw the author listed as one of the speakers at BookNet Fest, so I wanted to read her work in case our paths crossed there. However, it looks like the list I was poking around on is from last year, so there's no telling if she'll be there this year. Oh well, it was a fun way to find a new-to-me author. In any case, set in 1814, this book follows a girl who keeps getting in trouble with her parents for her botched experiments, and they decide to take her to an institute known for beating these tendencies out of girls. Despite various clues, it took the protagonist about 100 pages to realize that the proprietor was more interested in her science than torturing her. And alliances are formed to create a tool that might save many lives during a tumultuous time between England and France. Because this is set just after Napoleon is exiled to Elba. This one has mystery, romance, and intrigue, and although predictable at times, it was a good read. It is the first in the series that I'm not dying to continue, but would consider continuing in the future. Next I read Undead Girl Gang by Lily Anderson. This one has been all over booktube recently, and I finally got my hold from the library. Mila's best friend Riley has recently died, and everyone in her small town thinks it's a suicide. Except Mila. She knows Riley wouldn't do that, especially not copycatting two girls who committed suicide earlier in the week. When no one believes her, Mila turns to magic, which she used to practice with Riley, to get the truth. Magic never quite works the way you expect it to. I really enjoyed this one. The dynamics between characters, the unrequited crush on your dead best friend's brother, needing to get answers as to why you are now alone in the world. This book was filled with creativity and it makes me want to pick up everything else by this author. This book also deals with being fat, issues of race, and other privileges that direct the actions of certain characters. I absolutely recommend this book, which packs in quite a lot for how short it is. Next, for the read a -thon, I read A to Z by Kevin Major. This is a children's picture book that ticked off the challenge of reading a book with A in the title. Each page had four words, starting with a letter of the alphabet and a corresponding picture. At the end, there was an index that told you about each word, which was good because I didn't know all those words. Some of them were surnames of famous Canadians, or places I'd never heard of, or items of note in history in specific areas. I relearned the fact that there are dinosaurs named after the province of Alberta, Albertasaurus, and the city of Edmonton, Edmontosaurus? Yeah, that's how I'm gonna pronounce that. Canada is a big country, and I was unsurprised to find words I didn't know, even though it was a kid's book. Also for the readathon, I picked up Walt by Russell Wagner Sky. This one covered the challenge of reading a book set in a province you've never been to, in this case Newfoundland, and a book that had red on the cover. This book follows Walt, a 50-year-old grocery store janitor who has a hobby of picking up discarded grocery shopping lists. He makes a game of figuring out people's life stories based on what they put on the lists. He also, from time to time, stalks these people. In addition to this, he is also occasionally visited by the Cold Case Squad, who still wants to know what happened to his wife. When I picked this up, something on the cover made me think that this was a thriller, and I suppose it is, but it's a very slow burn thriller, if that's even a thing. Few things about the disappearance of his wife are confirmed, and we spend a lot of time in Walt's head and in the diary of the woman who he is stalking. This one was okay, it was a little slow for my taste, but I enjoyed the people watching aspects when you remove them from the fact that he was stalking people. It can be fun to notice things about people in the world and theorize about them based on the little evidence you have, but not when it turns from a harmless five minute game into obsession. There was a third book on my TBR for the readathon, but it started out very similarly to Walt, and I have other things I really want to read right now. So I've put Monkey Beach aside for a time where I'm more passionate about reading it. This week I watched the first three episodes of the second season of 13 Reasons Why, and finally figured out why Leah from Love, Simon looked familiar. I still don't really know why this show needed to have a second season given it's based on a book that only had material for one season. I didn't dislike watching these episodes, but I also didn't feel compelled to continue watching it throughout the week. Kate Walsh is still fantastic, and bring on as many scenes as possible with Tony. I appreciate that episodes include content warnings and an appeal from the cast to get help if you need it. I watched the entire first season on release day and then vlogged about it before even getting off my couch, so if you want to see that, I will link it in places. As for Survivor, we finished the third season in which older castaways were complaining about Gen Xers the same way that people now complain about Millennials. Because every generation thinks the generation after them sucks. My coworker told me there was a translation he once read where it had the usual grumblings of a generation hating the generation after it, but it was written in ancient Egypt. This week I listened to World War Z by Max Brooks. I picked this up because many people recommend this as an audiobook because it has a full cast, which is kind of the only way you could do this book. This is an oral history of survivors of a zombie war, so it reads more like a group of monologues rather than a narrative book. 
The stories are from various places in the world, but predictably most of these places are in America. I imagine this had a much bigger impact when it was first published because it looked at a zombie war on a more global scale, instead of sticking to a small group of characters, which is actually what I didn't really like about it. I enjoyed it, but my mind would wander when the scope of the narrative got too broad. It did bring up topics that I hadn't thought of in regards to this type of apocalyptic scenario though, so I was engaged. I'm just more of a continual character reader, and because of that I want to recommend a podcast I listened to many years ago. It's called We're Alive, and it was written and performed as a serial drama with different voice actors, sound effects, and music. It followed a group of characters during a zombie war, and I loved it. All of the episodes, because this story concluded years ago, are on its website, which I will link down below. That's it for this week. If you've read, watched, or listened to any of these, let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye! I relearned the fact that there are dinosaurs named after the province of Alberta, Albertasaurus, and the city of Edmonton, Edmontonsaur, Edmon, and Ed, Edmon, Edmentosaurus, eh, Edmontosaurus. Well, this is gonna be a blooper.